County Office of Education's annual high school honors concert. I'd like to begin by thanking and acknowledging Delta College for their partnership and sponsorship of tonight's event. Please give them a big hand. So we're fortunate to have two of our San Joaquin County Board of Education members here tonight. These two school board members have been longtime supporters and advocates of music and the arts in our schools. Please welcome board members, Mr. Peter Otteson and Mr. Vernon Gephardt. I'd also like to thank the music directors, the teachers, who work tirelessly with our students to provide them with the best music instruction possible. And thanks to all of, of the parents and families in the audience who have supported their children's interest in music and provided the encouragement and love to help them be successful. And what a great uh, turnout we have tonight. Great audience. Thank you for being here. And finally, let's thank and acknowledge the amazing, talented students who will perform this evening. So we at the San Joaquin County Office of Education are proud to again sponsor and organize the County High School Honors Concert. We've been providing music services and opportunities for our talented youth in San Joaquin County for over 60 years. We're committed to supporting and promoting musical opportunities for students and understand the critical role the arts play in our children's education and lives. Tonight, there will be 310 amazing students performing, 111 in choir, 114 in band, and 85 in orchestra. These 310 outstanding young men and women represent 10 school dis districts and 21 schools in San Joaquin County. These numbers reflect the commitment to music education that is occurring at schools throughout our county. I'd like to now introduce our Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, Jane Steinkamp, and thank her and her staff for doing an incredible job organizing this event each year. Thank you. This honor to introduce our guest conductor for band this evening, Dr. Travis Cross. Dr. Cross serves as a professor of music at UCLA, where he conducts the wind ensemble, directs the, the graduate wind conducting program, and chairs the music department. He was also the associate dean for the academic mentoring and opportunity during the initial years of the UCLA Herb Alpert School of Music. Cross conducted the UCLA wind ensemble at the California All-State Music Education Conference and the band, College Band Directors National Association, the Western and Northwestern Division Conference, and prepared bands for the centenary performance of a letter Bernstein's Mass with the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Travis Hurd has got a master's degree in conducting from Northwestern University and the Bachelor of Music degree cum laude in vocal and instrumental music education from St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. Dr. Cross contributed a chapter of his writings in the book series Composing for Band, available from GIA Publications. As a pro prolific composer in his own right, for one, you will hear in tonight's concert. He has appeared as a guest conductor, composer, and clinician in more than 30 states, Canada, China, Korea, Singapore, Spain, Thailand, United Arab Emirates, and the Midwest United in Chicago. Please give a warm welcome to our 2020 San Joaquin County guest conductor, Travis Cross.
I promise I won't talk too much, but I want to give the time to get time again. Uh, ready for the next uh, piece. So we open so with the Ordetsky March of uh, Johann Strauss Sr. Uh, you can read a lot of the program notes about the circumstances. Not the best reason to write a march, but always a great reason to play a march, uh, especially when it's to celebrate music education and these outstanding young people uh, in all three groups that you've heard tonight. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the evening with us. Uh, we're going to move on now with another piece, a newer piece, written by Frank T. Kelly, who teaches at USC, our friends across town, uh, down in Los Angeles. And this piece is called Glory Visited. The tune came to him at the birth of one of his children. Uh, so you can hear this you know, little rambunctious toddler, uh, you know, bouncing around the house uh, somewhat in the music, but it's a, a lovely little tune, uh, and uh, lots of contrast, lots of interesting articulations, and uh, fun dynamics uh, that you've heard tonight. So thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing the evening with us. Uh, we're going to move on now with another piece, a newer piece, written by Frank T. Kelly, who teaches at USC, our friends across town, uh, down in Los Angeles. And this piece is called Joy Revisited. The tune came to him at the birth of one of his children. Uh, so you can hear this you know, little rambunctious toddler uh, you know, bouncing around the house uh, somewhat in the music, but it's a, a lovely little uh, tune, uh, and uh, lots of contrast, lots of interesting articulations, and uh, fun dynamics. So, uh, Frank Tickell, uh, Frank Tickell,
Just a brief word about the next piece, which uh, I believe was written in 2011, Memento. And uh, I, I've written three pieces in uh, honor or memory of, of different grandparents of mine. And this was uh, in uh, honor at the time, in memory now, of uh, my, paternal great, uh, my paternal grandmother. Uh, who was suffering at the time from Alzheimer's disease. This is something all too many of us know all too much about. Uh, but uh, I wanted to write a piece that sort of spoke to nostalgia and spoke to memory. Uh, my grandparents, as I told the students, were from the World War II generation, the greatest generation. And so I, I went back, did a little bit of internet research, and I found the Indiana State song which is called On the Banks of the Wabash Far Away. It is not, as some people think, the song that Gomer Pyle used to sing at the Indy 500 uh, back home again in Indiana, although the two songs uh, sound very much alike. So it's a very Stephen Foster, 19th century Americana kind of song. There are about 15 or 20 seconds in this piece that are, are either direct quotes of the harmony or the tune from On the Banks of the Wabash Far Away. And they sort of represent almost as if you click on an AM radio and through the cackle you hear this, uh, cackle, the crackle, sorry. Uh, through the crackle you hear kind of an old timey Glenn Miller uh, kind of song playing in the background that transports you uh, to a different time. So uh, the work, uh, uh, incorporates that. It's mostly original music, but there are a couple little moments that I, I know you'll be able to find in the piece. Uh, so, uh, in honor of uh, people who are uh, struggling with this very difficult uh, condition and those that we have lost, uh, this is Memento.
so we come now to the end of the evening. Uh, our last piece is our longest piece. It's about seven, a little over seven minutes long. Uh, it's called Variations on a Korean Folk Song. Uh, my joke is that we go from Variations on a Folk Song by a Korean to Variations on a Korean Folk Song. Uh, but uh, this piece was written in the 1960s. Uh, John Barnes Chance, who tragically uh, died in an accident several years after he wrote the piece, one of the real promising composers. If you think about a Frank T. Kelly or a John Mackey of the 1960s, he was one of those people. Uh, and he had served in, uh, he had been in the service in Korea, so he heard this tune, which is it's, it's kind of the Shenandoah or the Amazing Grace of Korea. It's the, the sort of the national folk tune. Uh, and he wrote a series of theme and variations on that tune. And it's, it's just a masterful piece of music uh, and doesn't get done as much anymore these days, so I try to, to perform it as often as I can when I'm out uh, doing things like this. Uh, I want to take a brief moment on behalf of my colleague conductors uh, to thank everyone here in San Joaquin County for uh, the graciousness and the, the wonderful uh, uh, preparation of the students and uh, this beautiful space here at uh, Delta College and our host in this building, everyone who's been involved with making this enrichment, important enrichment activity happen for these young people. Uh, we all appreciate it very much, and most importantly, we appreciate you all for supporting these young people. You know, there's a lot of things people can do with their time. Uh, there's a lot of, and we realize how much time it takes to make something like this happen, and all of the little steps along the way, the regular rehearsals, the after-school rehearsals, the lessons, the concerts, the number of rides here and there, and all, all the effort that goes to give young people the chance to create beauty and to express themselves. And I, I hope you uh, uh, thank yourselves for uh, creating the circumstances for that to happen. Uh, just very briefly, since I'm in front of a microphone, uh, let me just say, that uh, we live in a time when the arts are never assumed. We can never take them for granted. And we always have to advocate. And we always have to remind people of their importance and the value that they have in our communities, in our families, in our lives. A lot of times people talk about what the arts do for other subjects, for academics, for test scores. And I am happy I will pick up a sign and march with you uh, and get in that parade that says music makes kids smarter. I really think it does. But what I think is really important is that music makes kids better. It's not just that they have better test scores or, or, or better grades or they get into college at a higher rate or this and that. Those things are all true and they're all wonderful. But what, what you can get that a lot of other places. What you can only get here is expressing your soul, expressing what you feel about the world, being able to be vulnerable with other people and to create beauty and to say to someone else, what you just did was lovely and wonderful and I appreciate it. And the community that comes from that and the way that we mature and grow as human beings, as community members, as fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters and children uh, and family members, that's what I think is really special about music. So I will be there for the Music Makes Them Smarter Parade, but I hope you'll be there with me for the Music Makes Them Better Parade, because I think that's what really counts. <laughs> with that note, let's make some music. Thanks again for being with us tonight. Variations on a Korean folk song.
each year, it is our privilege to recognize some of the night's performers in honor of Mr. Nelson Zane. Longtime music educator Nelson Zane passed away in 2011. Nelson spent 41 years with the County Office of Education, beginning as a traveling band director serving the rural schools of the county. He continued to serve as coordinator of musical events until 2003. Nelson leaves behind a legacy of thousands of students who learn to love music because of their contact with him. This evening we have with us Mrs. Nancy Zane, Nelson's wife, and daughter Nadia. Could you please stand? We're always thrilled when they're here with, with us to help us to um, the, the tradition of continuing to honor the students. The Nelson Zane Awards are given to those students who have participated in the honors concerts all four years of high school. This year we have 16 students, two from choir, five from orchestra, and nine from band. Our president will come out and help me um, give out this award. Carlos Lopez for band. Matthew Miramontes, band. Rory O'Regan, band. <laughs> Mackenzie Ringwood, band. <laughs> Connor Car Carnavali. Connor Car Carnavali. <laughs> Tanner Dunaway. <laughs> Shane Gardner. <laughs> Luann Ho. Sydney Lanning, <laughs> so all our four-year Nelson Zane Band recipient students. <laughs> For